Nearly all the foods we eat have a nutritional facts label that presents the essential values for what the food contains, showing the total fat, carbohydrate, protein levels, and loads of other info. But what do all these values mean and how are they measured? And how can this information help us to stay healthy? A lot of us should pay more attention to nutritional values. For example, you might love having a caramel iced coffee every morning. But if you look at the nutritional info, a large caramel iced coffee from a leading fast food chain has 680 calories. You would need to spend an hour biking at high speed to burn those calories off. So what exactly is a calorie? A calorie is a measure of energy. When most people think about the term calorie, they're actually talking about what nutritionists call a kilocalorie, or calorie with a big C. One calorie is the amount of energy it takes to heat one kilogram of water one degree Celsius at sea level. The calorie content of food was determined in the late 1800s by the chemist Wilbur O. Atwater. He built a device called a respiration calorimeter to make direct measurements of heat released by humans from the food they consumed. At 4 feet by 8 feet, Atwater's calorimeter was big enough to allow a person to step into it. It measured the amount of heat they released, the amount of oxygen they consumed, and the carbon dioxide they gave off. Using this device, Atwater was able to measure the precise amount of energy contained in thousands of food items. He found that carbohydrates and proteins were worth 4 calories per gram, and fats about 9 calories per gram. This 494 rule is at the heart of how labels are determined today. In case you are wondering how many calories you need every day, the answer varies depending on your gender, age, and your activity level. For example, a 17-year-old male with a moderately active lifestyle needs 2,400 to 2,800 calories per day. If that person has a sedentary lifestyle, that number goes down to 2,200. A process called metabolism, which occurs in the body's cells, generates the calories we need for our daily activities. Metabolism is a series of chemical reactions in which food is broken down and energy is released. When we consume more calories than our bodies need, these calories are stored for later use, primarily as fat. But how calories are produced and used, that is, our metabolism, varies from person to person. A person's basal metabolic rate, the rate at which a person's body uses energy while at rest, is responsible for up to 70% of the calories used by our bodies, so it can play a role in a person's tendency to gain weight. A person with a low basal metabolic rate will not use as much energy as a person with a high metabolic rate for the same amount of food. That's why people say that the ability to lose weight is linked to a person's metabolism. People can change their basal metabolic rate by exercising, which in the long run increases the basal metabolic rates of the heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, and the brain. Also, people with more muscle and less fat generally have a higher basal metabolic rate. In addition to calories, the nutrition label also displays the amount of the three main nutrients, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Fat is present in vegetable oil, dairy products, and fish. Proteins are found in meat, beans, milk, and nuts. Carbs are found in fruits, vegetables, and cereals. In the standard method for measuring fat, the food is ground up and continuously washed with an organic solvent that dissolves only the fat. This is the method that's been used for over 100 years, but it's very slow and complicated. A new method uses a technique called nuclear magnetic resonance to measure fat. It works by bombarding a food sample with a radio frequency pulse. This causes the magnetic moments of the protons in each of the sample's atoms to flip. After the pulse ends, the protons' magnetic moments flip back, but since they flip back a bit slower in fat, their signal can be separated from the rest of the signals, and the amount of fat can be determined. How much fat should you consume? Experts agree that 30% of our daily calories should come from fat, so if you consume 2,000 calories in a day, that means no more than 600 calories should come from fat. The standard method for determining the amount of protein in food is called the Keldahl method. This test relies on the fact that measuring protein content in food is similar to measuring its nitrogen content. This is because the nitrogen in food is mostly contained in proteins. In the Keldahl method, a sample of food is heated in boiling sulfuric acid and then neutralized with a solution of sodium hydroxide. This process converts the nitrogen present into ammonia gas, which is separated and measured. The ammonia gas ends up in a flask that contains a solution of boric acid. The amount of acid needed tells us how much ammonia was present, which also tells us how much protein was in the sample. So how much protein do we need every day? The Institute of Medicine recommends that adults consume a minimum of 0.36 grams of protein for every pound of body weight per day. 
so that works out to be about 58 grams for a 160 pound adult. The amount of total carbohydrates in food has traditionally been calculated rather than measured. In this method, the other components of food, such as protein, fat, and water, are measured and added together. When this sum is subtracted from the total, the difference is assumed to be the amount of total carbohydrates. About half of the calories that you consume should come from carbohydrates. In the end, all this data about calories, proteins, fats, and carbs can help people make decisions about the foods they buy and eat, especially when these people are overweight or obese. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than one-third of U.S. adults are obese. This alarming trend is apparently due to the fact that the average American diet is high in fat and sugar. By looking at the Nutrition Facts label, you can gain a better understanding of what you can eat, so you can make healthier decisions on what to include in your diet.